大家好，欢迎来到我们第二集的西洋棋特辑。如果你还没有看过我们西洋棋特辑第一集的话，可以先点进连结，先看我们第一集哦。今天我们要讨论更多 Netflix 后裔弃兵的内容。我们还会分享更多西洋棋的基本玩法。看完影片之后，你就可以开始自己下西洋棋喽。接下来我们一样都会用英文，所以你们要练习英文的话，就开英文字幕，或是不开任何字幕。如果你只想看中文，或是想看中文翻译的字幕来再练习听力的话，那就开中文字幕吧。Okay, so while Beth was at the orphanage, she saw the custodian, Mr. Scheibel, studying a chessboard. She learned chess by watching him move the pieces. At first, Mr. Scheibel was not willing to let Beth learn chess, but then he found out that she already knew how to play just from watching him. Beth is very special. That she can learn so quickly just by watching. She's also able to visualize the board with her mind. Yeah, I would say Beth is strongly a visual learner. She learns best by seeing things. I think so too. We use all of our senses, eyes, ears, using our hands to touch things. But it's common for one sense to be stronger. Yeah, that's true. People who are strong visual learners. Might be able to learn chess very quickly. I'm an auditory learner. I learn best with my ears, and I actually can't visualize the chessboard in my mind. I can remember the order of the moves, but I just can't see it on the ceiling like Beth can. What about you? Do you know which way you learn best? By seeing something, hearing something, or doing it with your hands? You can let us know in the comments. So eventually, Beth gets Mr. Scheibel to teach her more about how to play. And I think there's a good comparison to learning a language here. You might be able to learn a lot of language just by listening to it by yourself, but you can actually make even faster progress with some coaching. Very true. Language is mostly about exposure. The most important thing is you need to be exposed to a lot of that language, but it really can help if you have someone to guide you along the way and help you understand what you are hearing. Now we're going to switch to a top-down view to teach you how to play chess. So first, let's talk a little bit about the chess board. There are 64 squares on a chess board. Eight by eight, and you can see that、uh, for a lot of chess boards, they are numbered and lettered. The numbers always go along both sides of the board, and the letters go along the edges closest to the players. Now, when you set up a chess board,、uh, you always start with a white square in the right. And a black square in the left. If we turned the board just one turn like this, it would have a black square in the right and a white square in the left. You don't want that. Or the way you can also remember it, if your board has numbers and letters,、uh, white always has the letters and the number one closest to them. Okay. So now we're ready to put on the pieces, and let's start with the queen because I think there's a very helpful rule that we can remember about the queens. The queens always go on their own color, so the black queen always goes on the middle black square, and the white queen goes on the middle white square. This is one of the features of Western chess that actually the queen 
and the king pieces face each other from across the board. The king always goes on his opposite color. Great, so we start like this, and then on either side of the king and queen come the bishops, okay? This is the piece that usually has uh, some kind of point to it, like kind of a pointy hat, you might say. They go on either side of the king and the queen. Then we have the knights. Uh, these are knights, not horses. If you go into battle, you're not going to just send a horse with no rider into the battle. The horse would probably just run away. So, of course, they are knights. And the last piece is the rook. And the rook is basically the castle piece, right? So, but we call them rook. And those go on the very edges. And then last, we have eight pawns. Pawns are your soldiers, okay? And they just go up in the front like this. Okay, and you are all set up to play. Okay, let's talk about how each of the pieces moves. Pawns move one space forward at a time. Except for their very first move, they can move two spaces forward for the very first step, or they can choose just move one space forward. How do pawns take out the pieces? Well, Pawns can only take a piece that is to the diagonal. They cannot capture a piece that is straight ahead of them. They can only capture the piece that is one space to the diagonal. Next, let's talk about the rooks. Rooks can move forward and backward or sideways as far as they want, as long as there's no piece blocking their way. Now let's talk about the knight. The knight is a very special piece. It moves in what we say an L shape. So you can see that it moves two spaces forward and one space to the side. This is the same kind of movement as in Chinese chess. You can also move one space forward and two spaces to the side. Basically, uh, you can think of the knight's moves as going out in an L shape in every direction. And what is also special about the knight in Western chess is that it can jump over other pieces. So, for instance, with this knight, even though there is a pawn in front of it, it can jump two squares and move out. This only applies to the knight. No other pieces on the chessboard can jump over other pieces. Now let's talk about the bishops. You have two bishops on each side. One stays on the black squares, and the other one stays on the white squares. They can move as far as they want, just like the rooks, as long as there's no piece in front of them. The only thing is that they move diagonally. Okay, let's talk about the king and queen pieces, the last two. By the way, if you're ever wondering how to tell the difference between the king and the queen, usually in most chess sets, the king's crown has a cross on top. Designs of chess sets can be very different, but that's at least one common pattern you can usually identify the king with. Okay, now the king and the queen move in the same way except the queen has no limits. Here's what I mean. The king can move any square around him, but only one square at a time. So he can move to the side, he can move forward or backwards, he can also move to the diagonal, but he can only move one square at a time. The queen moves just like the king, it can move in any direction, sideways, forward, backwards, diagonal, but it can move as far as you want in any direction, as long as there's not another piece to stop it. And that makes it the most powerful and most valuable piece in the game of chess. Let's talk about capturing. Capturing in Western chess is just like in Chinese chess. Uh, we already talked about for the pawns, they capture one square to the diagonal. 
Uh, for all the other pieces, it's simply that you capture a piece that is at the end of your move for that piece. Chess is not like checkers where you jump pieces, right? Some games you jump the piece and then you take it, right? Uh, chess, you have to land on the square of the piece that you want to take. So it's the same for all of the pieces. Uh, for the bishops, uh, if a bishop has one of its own pieces, it can only move up to one of its own pieces, but if it has an enemy piece, you can move to that piece and capture it, and then that piece has to stop. <laughs> That's right, and same for rooks, same for all the pieces. In chess, white always gets to move first. That's right. So that's why white always has a slight advantage. When people start a game of chess, they try to make it random who gets the white pieces because white always gets to start. So a very common way to start a game of chess is one player will take a pawn from both colors and mix up the pieces and then offer their hands and the other player gets to choose, okay, and that person would get black. Uh, that way we make it fair for who gets the first move. Last two things we're going to talk about is that how to protect your king and how to win the game. That's right. So first, let's talk about a special move that the king has to help you protect him. And it's called castling. Now, if the space between your king and the rook is clear, and the king and the rook have not moved yet in the game, you can do something called castling. This is how castling works. In one move, you can move the king two squares to the left or the right, and move the rook to the other side of the king. If the king castles on his side, the king's side, it will look like this. Now, if the king castles on the queen's side, you'll notice that there is more space. The same rule applies though. The king moves over two squares and the rook moves just to the other side of the king. And it only takes one move. Castling is a very important way to protect your king. If you do not protect your king enough, then your king will be left in the middle of the board and it will be easier for your opponent to checkmate you. There are more advanced rules like castling and other rules like ampassan and promoting a pawn that we will talk about in the future videos. The last thing we need to talk about, of course, is how to win the game. The goal in chess is to checkmate your opponent. Now, what does it mean to checkmate your opponent? Well, it means that you attack your opponent's king and they have no place to move their king. So for instance, this is a very famous kind of checkmate and just like that, white has won the game. The queen is attacking the king. She can see the king, we might say, and the king has nowhere to move. Can't move in any direction. He has no escape. And in this case, the king cannot take the queen because the bishop is protecting the queen. That is one special rule about the king. The king cannot take a piece if that piece is protected. Now, other pieces can take uh, another piece even if it is protected. So, for instance, if this knight was here, this knight could take the queen and then the bishop could take the knight, etc. But the king cannot take a piece that is protected. And there are many, many ways to checkmate the king. Uh, in fact, that is one of the main challenges of learning chess, is that you need to learn all of the different ways that the king can be checkmated. Last thing we need to talk about is what check means. Check is not like checkmate. Checkmate means the king has nowhere to go and the game is over. But you can also check your opponent's king and your opponent will need to either block the check or move their king. Let's see what that looks like. So let's go back and let's say that 
we are in this situation, white moved out the bishop. Let's say that I move out this pawn and now white can move the queen here. The queen can see the king and uh, my opponent would say check. And this lets me know that my king is under attack and I need to somehow block the check or move my king. The game isn't over, it just means that my king is under attack. So I could do something like move this pawn up, which blocks the check, uh, or I could move my king like this so that the king moves out of check. And this is a very important part of the game. Before you checkmate your opponent, you will probably check them multiple times in the game. Chess is such a classic game, and it's a great way to have fun with friends. It's a great game of logic, and it's so fun to get to know how your opponent thinks and plays. Every person is different. Yeah, people have different strengths. Some people are very fast players, while for example, other players are very creative in their attacks. Once you have played many games, you can figure out what your playing style is. By the way, if you really want to play a game just with Chessman cookies, you need to buy many bags. One bag doesn't have all the pieces. Thank you for watching. We have two questions for you today. First, don't forget to answer what is your learning style? You can put your answer in the comment section. Second, would you like a Chessman cookie? Don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell so that you don't miss our next video, okay? 对,大家不要忘记订阅我们的频道,才会收到我们新影片的通知。如果喜欢我们的影片,别忘了为我们按赞或是分享哦。See you next time! Until then!